Math 1332, Chapter 2, Set Theory, Section 2.1, Introduction Set Theory, Video 3, Three Ways to Represent Sets. On the board, you'll see three sets that were used in previous videos. In the first video, we used the set A, which we defined to be the set containing the, the counting numbers 1 through 10 or the whole numbers 1 through 10, or the integers 1 through 10. I wouldn't say the rational numbers 1 through 10 because I would be missing all the fractions in between. We also defined a set C in the first video as the set of US capitals. And we also, in the previous video, defined the special set Q, I like my double script letters, being the set of rational numbers in other words, the set of ratios of integers such that the denominator is not equal to zero. These three examples illustrate the three ways to represent sets. The first set is an, is an example of what's called the roster method. The roster method for representing a set simply says list its elements, like we did here. Sometimes you use ellipses. For example, let's say I ask you to write the set using roster method, using the roster method or roster form. And the set is going to be the set, we'll call it the set D, is the set of integers between 10 and 20. Now notice that this set is not written in roster, in roster form or using the roster method because I did not list its elements. But we could fix that. We could write it in roster form using the roster method by simply writing the first element, comma, the second element, all the way to the last one. So where would this set begin? The set of integers between 10 and 20. There's a debate whether or not this includes the number 10. Well, let me ask you, is the number 10 between 10 and 20? For me, between means in the middle somewhere, and 10 is not in the middle between 10 and 20. If you see the phrase between, the implication is it does not include the beginning and ending numbers unless it says the word inclusive. So if this said the set of integers between 10 and 20 inclusive, then you would include 10 and 20. But without that, the presumption is they are excluded. So what is the first integer between 10 and 20? 11, and then 12, and then 13, and then, we could use some ellipses, but this set is short enough that I think I can write it without. Oh no, my answer's wrong. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Why is it wrong? Because the word between means not including, unless it says inclusive. This set should not contain 20, so I'll remove it. Close it off with that brace. By the way, if you draw your braces correctly, they look like this. If you draw them quickly, they usually look like this. If you're ever handing in something handwritten to your professor, make sure they can read your writing. Make it easier for us when we're grading your material. So roster method, simply form a roster, like, you know, like a class roster. Here's the list of names. Here's the list of elements in the set. The second set, C, the set of US capitals, is not in roster form. Could we put it in roster form? Sure, open up the set. Start writing all 50 state capitals. And I don't think I could use ellipses because there's no clear-cut pattern. I guess we could arrange them alphabetically, but it's not immediately clear what would come next if we just put some ellipses. So if I were to write the set of US capitals in roster method, I would actually list out all 50 of them. However, this is what's called the descriptive method. And as its name implies, the descriptive method describes the elements of a set. Just make sure that it's well-defined. Set of US capitals, that is well-defined. 
set of, uh, set of nice places to live, that's not well defined. So for example, let's say I ask you to write the set using, uh, we could say using the descriptive method, we could say using a description. Anything that implies you're going to describe the elements of a set as opposed to list them out. Now let's say the set is C equals uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now why would we need to describe the set when it was so easy to list them? Well, because sometimes sets are so large that it's inconvenient to list their elements and rather describe them. How could we describe these numbers? Could we say natural numbers? Well, we could, but that includes a lot of numbers that are missing. Remember, natural numbers start at one. So how could we describe this? Well, one way is to say something like the set of natural numbers less than seven. The set of natural numbers, numbers, less than seven. We could also say the set of natural numbers less than or equal to six. We could also say C is the set of numbers on a standard die, D-I-E. Uh, people are often more familiar with the plural of die, which is dice. Shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them. Uh, but singular, it's just a die. And a standard die has six faces with the numbers one through six on them. So there's more than one way to describe a set of numbers, or any set. There's usually more than one way to describe any set. As long as it's well-defined, meaning that you can pass judgment on whether or not an element belongs to the set. Does eight belong to the set? No. 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 Well defined. Descriptive method, describing the contents of a set without listing them explicitly. Now this last one's a little weird, and I kind of snuck it in in the last video. This last one is called set builder notation. In upper level math classes, set builder notation is very common because it's important to be able to represent sets as symbolically as possible without necessarily listing their elements individually. Set builder notation is kind of a combination of the roster method and the descriptive method. It looks like roster method because it's in a set of braces, but it also kind of looks like the descriptive method because we're describing the things inside the set without explicitly listing them. When you see a set in set builder notation, and I'm just going to write one out. You can usually spot it because you'll see this vertical line. This vertical line translates to the phrase such that up here is the set of fractions such that the numerator and denominator are integers and the denominator is not equal to zero. What precedes the such that is usually something generic. When we set up the set builder notation for the rational numbers, we needed something that was generic, but at the same time specific enough to say that I'm a ratio of integers. But in the absence of something specific like I'm a ratio of integers, you can just write something super generic to the left of the such that bar, such as, oh, I don't know, a variable x, or the variable actually doesn't matter. Then on the other side of the such that, you have to say the things that describe whatever is going to be in the set. For example, let's say I wanted to write this set, one through six, using set builder notation. Well, we kind of described it already. The set of natural numbers less than seven. If we wanted to write it symbolically in set builder notation, we could say the set of x's you usually state this plural, the set of x's such that x is an element of the natural numbers, because we did say that here, and x is less than 7. 
I have successfully described this set using symbols. There's actually a symbol for the word and. Um, we won't see it in this chapter. <laughs> Wait till chapter three. Let's take a look at one more example of writing a set in set builder notation. For example, write, um, well, let's do uh, set D over there, which was 11 through 19 in set builder notation. Well, how can we describe all the numbers in set D without just listing them? Well, we could say they're greater than 10 and less than 20. That puts them between 10 and 20. So let's start there. The set of all, and then something generic. I'll always use an X unless I have a reason to use something else. The set of all X is such that X is greater than 10 because all the numbers in here are and x is less than 20 because all the numbers in there are. However, if I close off this set right now, then I don't have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. This just says all the numbers between 10 and 20. But there are a lot of numbers between 10 and 20 that are not listed here, such as 11.5, 13 and 3 fourths, 18 and 9, nine, nine 18 and 9 seventeenths. All the decimals and fractions in between 19 and 20 are not in D, but so far are in this set down here. What else is true about the numbers 11 through 19? They're all integers. They're also whole numbers. They're also natural numbers. They are also rational numbers, but I can't say and X is an element of the rational numbers because if I did, then I'm leaving it, that I'm including a bunch more numbers that were not originally included, namely all the decimals and fractions in between. But I could say X is an element of the integers, which was the symbol Z. These are all the integers between 11 and 19. It also happens to be all the whole numbers between 11 and uh, between, excuse me, between 10 and 20. It also happens to be all of the natural numbers between 10 and 20. So just like uh, descriptions, there are multiple ways to describe sets using set builder notation. As long as it's well defined and contains the exact elements that you want, then it's a correct description.